this Christmas season, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus more than 2,000 years ago, let's keep in mind that we need to respond to Him in a manner that is befitting of a king. In spite of the fact that He was born in a lowly stable, there were prophecies and signs that pointed to His momentous birth, identifying Him as Emmanuel, God with us, and the newborn Messiah of the world. Today, let's take a good look at the people who were around that first Christmas and see what we can learn about loving and honoring our Savior better in our lives. Before we get into the message, Sun and I want to bring to your attention a very important work that we have been doing in the Central American Republic of Honduras. Let's watch this video right now. It's just hard to hard to help them if you have you don't have the right operating theater and the right environment. Just you know, bacteria free. Together, we have all uh, actually really made a difference. Up to this point, I think Sun Life has donated more than uh, about 110 shunts now since the end of April. So shunts are always a need. Shunts can cost between three to five hundred dollars, but we've been able to find a distributor that uh, is able to get them to us for a hundred dollars. that is sanitized. But here they have to use it because that's the only thing that they have. Um, the percentage of them getting infected is so high. So we're thinking of how to get the donation, how to get those passes that have antibiotics, a coat of antibiotics that's coated around it, you know, that's made especially for third world countries. We do have many needs in the, heart, in the public system, in the hospital as well. One of, one of them, one, a major one, is that we, have, we need a new surgical theater, a new center to treat those that pathologists specifically is urgently needed. Today I came in, it touched my heart a lot. I realized that whatever help that I've given, it feels so insignificant. I feel so assured that whatever donation, whatever shunt that we bought, it's given to good hands, to doctors and nurses that really care for the children. Maybe you're not a doctor, maybe you see this and you say, wow, I want to help. Uh, a donation of $100 could save one life, uh, because one shunt saves the life of one child. God has great dreams for you. They are dreams that are beyond anything you could imagine. In Kong He's latest series, Live Your Dream, learn how you can allow God to place His dreams in your heart, regardless of the challenges or circumstances you may be facing. To order Live Your Dream, visit konghee.com 
When you receive the Live Your Dream message series, you'll learn that regardless of the challenges you are facing, you can learn how to allow God to place His dreams in your heart, giving you understanding of God's greater purpose. I want you to learn how you can allow God to place His dreams inside your heart because I know that His dream for you are exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think or imagine. So please visit konghee.com to order a copy of Live Your Dream Today. Many of us always remember the three wise men who came from the East, how they came and offered gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh and worship the Son of God. But there was another group of wise men who didn't go to Bethlehem that night. And they were the chief priests and the scribes. And they were also considered wise by the people. And Herod called them to really advise him concerning the birth of the Savior. Now, for the last 2,000 years, every time the Christmas story was being told, people everywhere always remember the three wise men. Everyone's talking about the three wise men. We even sing of the three wise men, the three kings from Orient. And they were honored because they sought Jesus and found their salvation. But hardly anybody remember the chief priests and the scribes who were also considered wise. You know why? Nobody remembers them because of three mistakes that they have committed. You know, and those mistakes disqualified them from the greatest miracle of encountering salvation in their soul. This morning, I want to talk to you about those three mistakes because I don't want any of you to ever make them. I don't want you to consequently lose your salvation. Mistake number one, they try to earn their salvation. You look at verse 4 in Matthew chapter 2. It says, when he, King Herod, had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. Now, who were the chief priests and the scribes? Now, they were the top scholars, the most educated people in the land. They were the lawyers, the professors of law. They had money, they had position, they had power. And all throughout their Bible, their constant thinking was this, we can earn our own salvation by ourselves. And that is the first mistake people all over the world are making today. Yes, we all want righteousness, peace, and joy from God. But we think we can earn them for ourselves. Come on, Pastor Kong. I mean, in life, there is a price tag for everything, right? So why don't you just tell me, how much must I pay for my own salvation? How many good charitable works do I need to do so that I can earn a place to go to heaven? This morning, I have some good news and some bad news for you. <laughs> the bad news is, God is not short of money. If you don't give God your money, He's not gonna go hungry in heaven. <laughs> He's not interested in your gold, your silver, your material things. You can't buy your own salvation. But I'm here also to tell you the good news. And the good news is salvation is a free gift from God. Oh, go ahead and give the Lord a big clap. It is free. And God will give to anyone free of charge if you call upon the name of Jesus Christ, you can earn your salvation through your religious exercises, crying ocean of tears, working hard in your life, fulfilling all your religious duties. You know, God has nothing to sell. But I tell you the opposite is true. God gave His Son to die for you on the cross to pay for your salvation so that you can be saved free of charge, free of charge. 
that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to clap? Give the Lord a big hand. Give your gold and your silver to somebody else. God is not interested in all your money. Years ago, many tourists used to go to a prison in Europe. And every time when they visit the prison, they'll come to a prison cell where a hardcore criminal used to live inside. And everyone will leave the place with tears in their eyes. Now, what was it? that touched them in such a deep way. Well, the man who used to occupy the cell was sentenced to life imprisonment. You see, he lived out his sentence because he had committed multiple murders. One day, somebody gave him a copy of the New Testament. He had nothing to do in prison. So he opened up the Gospel of John and started reading it. And there he encountered the love of God. Suddenly, Jesus became real to him. And he received his salvation. And he was delivered from years of hatred and was wonderfully set free. Now, of course, his salvation didn't change his prison term. He was sentenced for life. So he served it to the bitter end. He died as a prisoner in jail. But this man had been an artist before he went to jail. And now, in jail, he had no tools. So he thought, how could I draw something to express my heart and my love for God? He decided to grow his fingernails until they were very long. And he started to scratch them on the wall to form a drawing on the solid concrete wall of the prison cell. Now, it was that picture that touched many hearts. Now, the picture shows two hands, two hands holding a broken heart, broken in many pieces. And underneath it, he wrote the words of the beautiful Christian hymn, Oh God, I give my heart to Thee. My God, I give my heart to Today. Now listen, people of Singapore, God doesn't want your money. He doesn't want your charitable works. He doesn't want your religious exercises. What is God saying? God is saying, give me your heart. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. My friends, this afternoon, it is our heart that God sent His Son 2,000 years ago to be born as a baby Savior, to grow up and die for the whole world so that He can have our hearts. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. The first mistake, the priests and the scribes tried to buy their own salvation. Mistake number two, they refused to believe in the Savior. When King Harold asked the question, where can I find the Savior of the world? The next verse, Matthew 2, verse 5 and 6, they say to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. You see, when Herod asked the question, where is the Savior, the chief priests and scribes went immediately to the Scripture and the history books. And immediately they knew that they knew that they knew born in Bethlehem that night was the Savior of the world. They knew the place, but they did nothing about it. They knew the location, but they missed the incarnation. They knew the location, but they didn't believe born in the major was the savior of the world. They knew the Bible story, but they didn't seek after him. They chose to passively stay in the presence of King Herod instead of moving toward the presence of the Most High God. Friends, you can't be saved just by knowing the Christmas story. In fact, you can know a great deal about the Bible and still be lost. 
The priests and the scribes could quote the scripture by heart, and yet they didn't act on what it says. The priests and the scribes are like so many people in our world today. They know many Bible stories. They give Jesus credit for being a good man. Oh, he's a wonderful teacher. Oh, I know he's a great prophet. Oh, he's a very holy man. They can talk about the wonderful philosophy that Jesus taught. But all these still fall short of the salvation of God. The Bible says in order to be saved, you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and then you shall be saved. Millions of people in the world today are wanting salvation, but they are passively dwelling in the presence of Satan the devil instead of moving towards the most holy God. And the result is they can't find peace with God. They can't find righteousness and joy and love in the Holy Spirit. The good news is, you are in the right place at the right time. Right here, right now, Jesus Christ, the Savior, is here among us. Oh, go ahead and praise God. You are in the right place, not because Kong is here, but because Jesus is here. And when He is here, he is here to save. He is here to heal. He is here to deliver. He is here to come into your soul and give you salvation so that one day you can have eternal life and live in heaven. Oh, go ahead and give the Lord another big clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. What were the mistakes those wise men, the chief priests and the scribes committed their first Christmas 2,000 years ago? Mistake number one, they tried to buy and earn their own salvation. Mistake number two, although they knew, they chose not to seek the Savior or believe in Him. Now, why didn't they hurry on to Bethlehem to find Jesus Christ? Mistake number three, the third fatal and final mistake, they feared losing favor with man. They were afraid of losing favor with King Herod. You know, the chief priests and scribes were more fearful of what other people would say rather than what God would say. Oh, my friends, they wanted salvation, but they were afraid of how King Herod would think about them. Listen, when it comes to your salvation, I'm talking about your salvation, it doesn't matter what your friends think. It doesn't matter what your neighbors think. It doesn't matter what your boss would think. It doesn't even matter what some preachers would think. It only matters what God thinks. Many people want salvation. They want God's peace and joy. They want to be a better person from the inside out. They want to be righteous and pure in their hearts but they are so full of their own ideas and they want to tell God what to do. My goodness, you better not tell God what to do. Friends, you better listen to what He says you must do. And God says to us, open up your heart, turn from your sin, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Listen, if you are sick and you go and see a doctor, you don't go to the doctor and say, okay, doctor, I'm sick. Now, this is what I demand from you. Give me 10 red pills, 5 green pills, and 4 blue pills. The doctor will look at you, say, hey, wait a minute. Who's the doctor? Am I the doctor or you're the doctor? You should not be telling me what to do. You should be listening to me. Friends, it's the same thing. You can't tell God what to do. When it comes to your eternal salvation, it is God who must tell you what to do. Oh, go ahead and give the Lord a big clap. The chief priests and scribes make three mistakes. They try to buy and earn their own salvation. That's mistake number one. Mistake number two, they chose not to seek after or believe in their Savior. Mistake number three, 
they were afraid of how other people would think about them. I have one last question this morning. If they had not committed one of those three mistakes, would they have been safe? If they had not committed any one of those three mistakes, would they still have been saved? The answer is no. Now, how about two? The answer is still no. Friends, you can make a lot of mistakes and do many wrong things. But when it comes to your salvation, we can't afford to make any mistake. We can't afford to play games with our eternity. Because one mistake, and you can be lost forever and ever without God. This morning, you may have made three mistakes, 30 mistakes, 300 mistakes, 3,000 mistakes. But this morning, do the one right thing. Come to Jesus Christ on this wonderful Christmas day and let Him change your heart from inside out. Experience His free gift of righteousness, peace, and joy, and let Him make you a better person from this Christmas day onward. I tell you, if you receive Him, today will be a new day for the rest of your life. You'll never be the same again. Oh, come on, give the Lord a big hand. You can still make a decision for Christ today. You can choose to believe. You can choose to worship and choose to allow Jesus into your heart so that your life will forever change in the most amazing way. Why don't you say this simple prayer with me right now? Dear Lord Jesus, I'm so grateful that you were born that first Christmas night to be my Savior. Please come into my heart to be my King. Forgive me of all my sins. I will follow you and worship you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. To, had to help them if you have you don't have the right operating theater and the right environment just you know bacteria free Up to this point, I think Sun Life has donated more than uh, about 110 shunts now since the end of April. So shunts are always a need. Shunts can cost between three to five hundred dollars, but we've been able to find a distributor that uh, is able to get them to us for a hundred dollars. percentage of them getting infected is so high. So we're thinking of how to get the donation, how to get those passes that have antibiotics, a coat of antibiotics that's coated around it, you know, that's made specially for the world countries. 
we do have many needs in the in the public system in the hospital as well. One of one of them, one a major one, is that we have, we need a new surgical theater, a new center to treat those that pathology specifically is urgently needed. Today I came in, it touched my heart a lot. I realized that whatever help that I've given, it feels so insignificant. I feel so assured that whatever donation, whatever shanta or bought, it's given into good hands to doctors and nurses that really care for the children. Maybe you're not a doctor, maybe you see this and you say, wow, I want to help. Uh, a donation of $100 could save one life uh, because one shunt saves the life of one child. God has great dreams for you. They are dreams that are beyond anything you could imagine. In Kong He's latest series, Live Your Dream, learn how you can allow God to place His dreams in your heart, regardless of the challenges or circumstances you may be facing. To order Live Your Dream, visit konghee.com. When you receive the Live Your Dream message series, you'll learn that regardless of the challenges you are facing, you can learn how to allow God to place His dreams in your heart giving you understanding of God's greater purpose. I want you to learn how you can allow God to place His dreams inside your heart because I know that His dream for you are exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think or imagine. So please visit konghee.com to order a copy of Live Your Dream today. We hope you are having an amazing Christmas season right now. Even as you enjoy your time of family, friendship, and gift giving, we pray that God will also do a special work in your life and encounter you in the most intimate and life-changing way. Be blessed. Bye. Bye.